Alright guys, Dominic here for Kit Guru, and today we're checking out not one, but two RTX 3060 cards. You might have seen our recent shorts video where we actually introduced these two models, but here we are looking at the MSI RTX 3060 Gaming X Trio, as well as the Palette RTX 3060 Storm X OC. Now, if you're wondering why we're looking at these two cards, it's because I've seen a number of large triple fan RTX 3060 cards on the market. And I'm really wondering, do you need that level of performance to cool an RTX 3060? To answer that question, we are putting a triple fan card head to head with a single fan ITX card. And that's the Storm XOC, which is actually the smallest ampere based GPU I have seen so far. Before we get into all of that though guys, I just want to say if you haven't already, please do hit that subscribe button and ding that notification bell. It's just a quick and easy way to help us out and make sure you don't miss out on any of our content. Cheers! Back to the cards then, before we get into any performance figures, we're going to take a quick look around, look at the design and the aesthetics. The first thing to point out though really is just the sheer size difference between these two cards. Obviously, like we said, it's a triple fan card versus a single fan card. Before the MSI Gaming X Trio, it's actually the same size as the 3090 model. So that really does tell you how big it is. In terms of the dimensions, it comes in at 323 by 140 by 56 millimeters. So it completely dwarfs the Palette Storm X OC. In actual facts, the Storm X is barely bigger than the X16 PCIe slot as it measures in at just 170 by 125 by 39 millimeters. We can even see that the Gaming X Trio is the same size as Palette Storm X OC box. So that's just another indicator of the sheer difference in size between these two cards. Naturally, that also has big implications for the weight of both cards. For the Gaming X2, it actually tipped our scales at 1,483 grams. So it's a whole kilogram heavier than the Storm X OC, which weighed in at 472 grams. MSI even includes a support bracket in the box with the Gaming X Trio just to try and prevent any GPU sag once it's actually installed in your system. And considering the weight of the card, I would definitely say that is a good move. In terms of aesthetics now then, we have already reviewed a number of Gaming X Trio cards this generation, and the RTX 3060 is using the exact same design language. So it's got a black plastic shroud with a few grey areas, and while I wouldn't say it's a overly in-your-face gamer type aesthetic, it does have a little bit of angles and curves which give it a slightly aggressive look. We can also note three of MSI's Torx 4.0 fans, and these measure in approximately 92 millimeters. Contrast that with the Palette Storm X OC, it is a night and day difference. The palette is overall very plain, I would say. It's made entirely of black plastic, though it does have a sort of semi-gloss finish, but I wouldn't really say there's anything about it that really catches your eye. Obviously, it's only a single fan cooler as well, but the fan is pretty large at 100 millimeters. Elsewhere, we can also see that the Storm X OC simply does not have a backplate at all, and we're looking straight onto the back of the PCB. The Gaming X Trio does have a full-length backplate, though it is made of plastic, and we can see a cutout behind the GPU core, as well as a few cutouts towards the end of the card, designed to allow kind of that direct airflow through the heatsink. Both cards do also have RGB lighting, but for the Storm X OC, the only RGB zone is a single palette logo, so it's not going to add a whole lot of bling to your system. The MSI Gaming X Trio, however, has a much larger LED light bar on the front side of the card, and here you can see a lot of different colours going on, although I would say that the LEDs aren't being diffused overly well, as you can see a few hotspots, but whether or not that bothers you is entirely up to you. It's also worth looking at the power connectors. The Palette Storm XOC only needs a single 8-pin, which is exactly what I'd expect, but the Gaming X Trio actually needs two 8-pin power connectors. Considering that both GPUs actually have the same 170 watt total graphics power rating, two 8-pins to me is just unnecessary. You're going to get all the power you need through a single 8-pin, as well as the 75 watts you get through the PCIe slot itself. So again, two 8-pins really is just unnecessary. And the only reason I can think MSI has done this 
is because they're reusing their PCB from a higher spec card. Display outputs, on the other hand, are identical between the two cards, as we have three DisplayPort 1.4 and then one HDMI 2.1. As for the PCBs now, once more we can see a clear gulf in size. The Storm X OC is actually as long as the Gaming X Trio is tall, and that is quite something. Not only that, but the MSI card has a beefier VRM, with a 7 phase solution for the GPU using OnSemi 302045 MOSFETs, as well as the OnSemi NCP81610 controller. The Storm X OC is using the same OnSemi MOSFETs for its VRM but it's only a 5-phase solution, controlled by the UPI UP9512R. Both cards also utilize a 2-phase VRM for the memory. In terms of the coolers, we'll start with the Gaming X Trio. As far as I can tell, this cooling solution is actually identical to the RTX 3070 Gaming X Trio, and bear in mind that GPU is rated for 240 watts, compared to 170 watts for the 3060, we can see three aluminium fin stacks which are connected by six 6mm copper heat pipes and these make direct contact with the GPU. One side of the memory also connects with these heat pipes via thermal pads while the other contact with a separate plate. The Storm X OC now is much more basic with a single fin stack and just three 6mm heat pipes. A large central base plate is used to contact both the GPU and the memory and there's one smaller plate for the VRM off to the side. So that will do it for our look at the card and the coolers, and now we're going to move on to talk performance. For this, all of our testing was done on our usual test system provided to us by PC Specialist. This is built around an i9-10900K, which we've overclocked to 5.1GHz on all cores. There's also a Asus ROG Maximus 12 Hero motherboard, and 32GB of Corsair Vengeance DDR4 memory clocked at 3600MHz. For performance, we're going to start off with our out-of-the-box thermal testing, and right away we can see a clear difference between these two RTX 3060s. MSI's Gaming X Trio just runs incredibly cool, hitting a GPU temperature of 58 degrees and a hotspot of just 70 degrees. And that makes it 11 degrees cooler than the Storm X OC in terms of GPU temperature, and 10 degrees cooler in terms of the hotspot. We can also see that the MSI is outperforming Gigabyte's Gaming OC, which is the card we reviewed for launch day. Having said that though, the palette's temperatures are really not bad, it's just that the MSI is really, really good. I still have absolutely no issues with the Storm X OC running those sort of temperatures though, during prolonged gaming sessions. When we come to acoustic now, things look even better for MSI. We recorded a noise reading of just 33 dBA, and that's getting pretty close to our noise floor. I'd say it's actually the quietest GPU I have ever tested in its default state. It really is really impressive stuff. As for the Storm X OC, that is noticeably louder, hitting 39 dBA, and the single fan was audible over our case fans. I wouldn't call it loud, and you can see it is still significantly quieter than something like the reference RX 5700, but it's not whisper quiet like the MSI. Taking noise out of the equation though, next we come to noise normalized thermals. Given the Storm XOC was already pretty close to 40 dBA, we only had to increase fan speed by 130 RPM, so temperatures dropped by just 2 degrees. With the Gaming X Trio, however, GPU temperatures dropped into the mid 40s, which is absolutely outstanding and means it ran 21 degrees cooler than the Storm X OC when noise normalized. Again, though, I would stress that the palette isn't doing badly here, not at all. It's just that the Gaming X Trio is delivering absolutely superb performance. Next up is Power Draw, and here I do find it interesting that the results can vary a little bit despite both models sharing the same 170 watt power target. The Gaming X Trio comes in slightly under that, while the Storm X OC comes in just over. It's not a significant difference at all, but definitely something worth pointing out. The really interesting thing for me is, despite the huge advantage the Gaming X Trio has in terms of thermals, it really doesn't run much faster than the palette. We can see from this graph that its clock speed does trend slightly higher, but actually averaged over our 30 minute stress test, we're only talking a difference of 16 megahertz. So that's really not much at all. 
As for how much difference that 16 MHz gap will make in the real world, we're now going to move on to our game testing. We tested 12 games at 1080p and 1440p, but we're not going to go over every single one here as the trend does become obvious pretty quickly. If you do want to see all of our benchmarks though, head over to the written reviews on kitguru.net. Here we're going to kick off with Assassin's Creed Valhalla, and we can immediately see no performance difference between the Storm XOC and the Gaming X Trio. Both average 64 FPS at 1080p, with the 1% lows dipping down to 47 FPS. Next up is Dirt 5, and here we do see a very slight difference between the two, with the MSI card hitting 82 FPS on average, compared to 81 FPS for the palette, so that's just a 1% difference, and honestly, not something you'd notice during real world gameplay. As for Red Dead Redemption 2, here the difference between the two cards is again just a single frame. With the frame rates below 60 FPS however, this works out as a 2% difference, but again, it's not something you'd ever notice. In actual fact, we didn't see more than a 2% difference between these two cards across all 12 games we tested. Finally, we come to Watch Dogs Legion, and again here, the two cards are dead level, averaging 64 FPS with lows of 56 FPS. Looking now at the big picture overview, averaged across all 12 games we tested, the Storm XOC hit 89 FPS, with the Gaming X Trio at 90 FPS. This means the Storm XOC is technically slower, but only by 1% on average, so it really is a meaningless difference. In actual fact, at 1440p, that difference shrinks to exactly zero. So that really does tell you there is just nothing between these two cards in terms of raw gaming performance. We did also try manual overclocking to see how much more we can squeeze from these cards. Starting with the Gaming X Trio, here we maxed out the power limit at 105% and we were able to add 280 MHz to the GPU and 1000 MHz to the GDDR6 memory. For the Storm X OC, you can't actually push the power limit further than 100%, so that does mean we were limited in terms of how far we could push the clock. We still added 220 MHz to the GPU though, and 900 MHz to the memory. Both overclocks resulted in significant frequency gains, but as we'd expect considering you can adjust the power limit for the MSI, it did run faster, hitting an average speed of 2123 MHz, compared to 2029 megahertz for the Storm XOC. Thanks to that increased frequency, the Gaming X Trio ran between 9 to 12% faster in the three games we tested at 1080p, while we can see the palette saw its frame rates boost by 8 to 10%. RTX 3060 is definitely showing some value for the overclockers out there, as we are seeing much bigger gains here than with any other Ampere GPU we have tested. Overall then, I am sure for many of you, the results shown in this video won't have come as a surprise. The Gaming X Trio is way bigger than the Palette Storm XOC, so we would have expected it to be cooler, quieter, and slightly faster. And that is exactly what we found. The question for me then really becomes, do you actually need that sort of thermal and acoustic performance for an RTX 3060? Because the key to remember is, while the MSI was really, really good, it's not like the Storm X OC was bad. It still kept temperatures below 70 degrees, and it was only a little bit louder than one of NVIDIA's Founders Edition cards. In my view, it's a case of the Storm X OC being good, while the Gaming X Trio is technically superb. A key thing to remember though, and while this might sound obvious, it's just the fact the Gaming X Trio really is huge. It's almost twice the length of the Storm X OC. As we saw, it's actually using the same cooling solution as the RTX 3070 Gaming X Trio, and that's a 240 watt GPU when the 3060 is 170 watts. For me, the Gaming X Trio really is overkill. It's awesome to see sub 60 degree temperatures, but at the end of the day, a real world result of 55 degrees compared to 70 degrees isn't going to give you any real world benefit and at that point it just becomes a number on a page. Contrast that with the absolutely tiny Storm X OC and personally I think that Palette's GPU is technically more impressive. The thermal and acoustic performance we saw from this card in a package which is barely bigger than an X16 PCIe slot, for me that is just really really cool 
And remember, the real world gaming differences between the two cards was barely 1%. Now, the current availability issues being as it is, I really don't know when or if these cards are going to come back into stock and what prices they'll be when they actually do. In a normal world though, we would expect the Storm XOT to be the cheaper card and for me, I do think it is a better option. It's just so small, but you really do get excellent performance in a tiny package. The Gaming X Trio on the other hand is really technically superb. But for me, I just think it's overkill for an RTX 3060. And being a Gaming X Trio, we know it's going to be one of the more premium cards out there. That is going to do it for this head-to-head -head review though, guys. So if you liked it, toss us a thumbs up. Leave me a comment down below and let me know what you think of these two cards. If you're shopping for a 3060, which would you prefer? You can also chat with us over on our Discord server, which is linked in the description. And there you can also check out our merch and even consider backing us on Patreon, where you can see some of our content early and get access to exclusive giveaways. That's all for now though guys, I'm Dominic for Kit Guru, and I'll see you in the next video.